Hi, this is Dave, and welcome to the Polaris XL Seaplane Build Series, Part 15. I'm working on putting the decals on the plane and I just want to show you where some of the decals go or I'll try to show you where they all go and how they go on so let's start with the side here you can see I put one of these right here these stripes on the side and the blue go goes towards the top the tip starts about in the middle near the front and goes under the wing parallel to the wing now coming up next we have the top piece here and they have a little card here that basically explains it fortunately because I wouldn't have known but this actually goes at the top right here it's sort of the canopy decal I probably won't be using this because I'm I've got FPV this is where my antenna comes through I've got a heat sink I could put it on there but I don't know if I will and then accompanying those are the side pieces there's two side pieces like this that go along the sides right there the other ones laying over here and then there's a piece for the bottom that you can put on the bottom then these were a puzzle at first but uh, what these are is some long stripes that you can sort of cut in half or cut whatever you length whatever length you need cut those lengths so that you have four pieces that can go underneath for uh, stripes that run you know under the wing from back to front so that's what that's for and then I've got four pieces that will go on the back here I'll do those in a minute when I show you how to apply them I've already got the side pieces on and notice the the blue goes towards the front so blue towards the front on both of those and then I've got these pieces on the back again blue going towards the front this is all one piece here on the vertical stabilizer and that again blue go, goes towards the front or the outside just as these side pieces the blue goes toward the top yellow towards the back so that's basically how they go on and then there's one of these Polaris large Polaris typed labels right here and that goes right here on the left side just like that and these two small ones are going to go on the nacelle one on each side of the nacelle right here and then these pieces go on either side of the pylon right there so I'll be putting those on and showing you how and uh, I believe that's all there is I think that's all the decals and where they go. Now what you have to do is very carefully peel off the cardboard on the reverse side. So see if you can just find a corner or something you can get a grip on that cardboard. Uh, sometimes a sharp knife. Doesn't have to be too sharp, but just something to get underneath it like that and peel it back. So that's the cardboard and when you peel the cardboard off it reveals the sticky side of the decal. Alright so now we got to make sure that the blue is going towards the front. So there's a rounded section right here and I don't really want to put it on too much on that rounded section. I'll just put it on there a little bit and uh, let's see, I'll make sure it all fits first. That's pretty good. All right, now just stick it down like that. Make sure it's stuck down all around. Now 
Okay, now we got to peel off the top layer, and the top layer is actually a little harder to remove than the bottom layer for some reason. It's a uh, not always easy to get a grip on a piece but I think I got it there we go I'm using the exacto knife again all right now when you peel this back sometimes you have to hold the decal so it doesn't peel up while you or crinkle either while you're peeling back this part so I kind of just keep rubbing on it at least when I get started and then peel it off and then once it's off you go back over it and just make sure it's, it's down there now i'm putting these decals right over new stuff from aloft hobbies it's 0.07 uh, mils and um, it actually acts like a good base for this for these decals so the decals really stick good to it almost better than they'd stick to the foam all right, we got that on. So that's the basic process. So there is what it could look like. I hope that gives you some idea. So this decal here goes on the nose on the bottom, right in this area somewhere. Maybe like that. I don't know exactly couldn't find it in the directions but I think it goes about in there somewhere the nose is usually colored you know you can make the nose blue or something like that so I guess this is just sort of a air of a skid blade or something that can go there alright now let's talk about the stripes we want to put some stripes on the bottom right here and separate these so let's do that next so what I did was cut the uh, the long sheet in half like this, so I have one for each side. Put that over there. Now let's cut down the middle. Well, maybe cutting down the middle wasn't a good idea. I don't know. It's kind of like you need one longer than the other, but I'll just I'll just go with it. So I'm going to put one divided into three sections and just put one for this section one for that section sort of like that you can put them wherever you want you can be creative so I've just uh, stacked them up on top of each other right here and I'm going to use my scissors to just cut a rounded tip on all four of them at once so that's about how I want it to go something like that and then I've cut the other one to match this one for the other side over here alright I'm going to go ahead and ply that and like I said, I'm just peeling the cardboard off the back, sticking it on, and then peeling the protective covering off the top, the paper off the top. So there they are. It's just an eyeball job. I didn't do any measuring. I just went kind of artsy-fartsy. Just put them on there however they go. But I think they came out pretty straight. Look okay to me. It's just so you can see when the plane's flying up in the air, which is the bottom and which is the top. Just give you some indication. And I'm going to do the other side the same way. And then I'll be done. So I can make the sides look sort of symmetrical. I've just measured here what I have. Looks like three and a half. So I'm going to come over here three and a half and put a mark. And then put my next piece in. So there she blows. I ended up putting this right on the front right here. I have no idea how that's supposed to go because the directions didn't show it, but it did have a label on it that it said it went on the front bottom. So I put it on the front bottom. And here's my stripes. And I think they're pretty symmetrical. So there you go. That's all I can tell you how the decals go. Good luck on yours. You can be creative. I don't think they have to go exactly in certain locations so you don't have to be OCD about it just get them on there because it makes the, the plane look pretty and there's the top so now all the electronics is installed I want to just do a quick overview so here is where the heatsink is for the 1.3 antenna 
uh, 1.3 transmitter for the video and this is the antenna I'll just take that off and then there's two clips here so I can open the door there's the bottom there is the transmitter right there the 1.3 gigahertz transmitter okay now I have the two batteries these are two 2200 milliamp hour three cell batteries mounted in parallel right here and the two connectors for the video transmitter and the camera come out right here this is the camera up here it's a FPV camera that's in this plastic housing that John made he 3d printed it and then there's a platform here for uh, a Mobius or run cam type HD camera all right over here is the heat sink for the ESC and right here is the GPS for the uh, Eagle Tree Vector okay now I've cut this hatch open so we can get a look inside and so here's the final setup Vector is mounted right here the power module for the Eagle Tree Vector is over here and the Easy UHF receiver this is the long range receiver is mounted right there the antenna for it or the receiver is right here comes out right there at the vertical stabilizer okay so I also have in here an LC filter which can't really be seen it's underneath here but right down in there there's an LC filter board and what I've done is tapped into the power what I've done is tapped into the power coming out of the power module right here and that plugs in right here to the LC filter then it comes back out the LC filter split into two plugs two JST plugs that plug into the power inputs for the vector to run the camera and the video transmitter and those are both 12 volts that come out of there I have a 12 volt camera and 12 volt transmitter so that's the basic layout right here. Oh yeah, there's also a UBEC back in here, which uh, also comes off the back of the power module here with the uh, full power. It goes to this UBEC, and then it's uh, converted down to 5 volts, which goes to the servo bus on the vector, which is right here. So that uh, UBEC plugs in right there to the servo bus. To give power to the servo bus and since this receiver is also plugged in there it gives power to the receiver as well so that's the whole layout Take your light.